Hi and welcome to this video where it's a bit of a quick one um, but it's basically replacing the cables on the electronic parking brake on a Renault Laguna 3. So obviously it's open the box up, put the new cables in and obviously refit back to the car. So that's at the point I am now is refitting back to the car. So fingers crossed all will be well and we have a parking brake on this car. So, hope you enjoy this video, and many thanks for watching. So the first thing to do is jack up the rear of the car, and always make safe with axle stands. So then we'll just show where the jacking point is, which is there, it's highlighted in red. Now, it may seem quite obvious that, but actually looking at the front of this car, somebody's accidentally jacked up on the outer sill, and the whole thing's actually caved in. So it is worth noting where the correct jacking point is. So anyway, so we'll lift the vehicle up. Now what I actually forgot to do was break the wheel nuts loose first. So anyway, I've lifted it up. We've got a seized wheel here. It seems to sort of roll forward, but it doesn't want to roll back. So that's obviously going to have to be resolved. That should have been quite noticeable when trying to reverse the car, that it was almost like the brake was on. But anyway, yeah, so I forgot to break the wheel nuts loose. Thankfully, I've got this tool here. It's actually an MOT tool. I'll put a link in the description. And it's for applying the brake pedal. So you can actually check the brake lights and things like that. That actually will exert enough pressure for me to undo the wheel nuts so we'll see if that actually works and it does so it's a 17 millimeter socket for these five wheel bolts and we'll get those off now and throw our tools on the ground and see what we've got so I suspect this is the side with the broken cable and there it is we have got a broken cable there. So that is the issue with this. Now, I heard that actually a new replacement handbrake module would be about £700. Um, now, I think you can send the module away on an auction site, and I think they'll replace the, well, the service charge, I think it's about £100. Um, and then you've got to pay for the cables on top, which is about £70. So you could send the unit away for around £170 and they'll fit the cables for you and send it back. So you've got that option if you don't want to open up the actual electronic module itself. But anyway, back to the car. As we can see, this side's actually fine. But I'll just show the parts that make up the brakes. So briefly here we've got the brake disc. And then there's this spring clip. And there's the brake pads in orange. The actual brake caliper there. And there's the handbrake cable as well. So I'm just going to do a bit of swapping around here because I'd like the axle stand on the sill. So I'm just using another jack there so I can get that in the correct position as opposed to being held on the rear axle like it is on the other side. So anyway, we'll take that off now. So the discs should be free to rotate. Yeah, that one is. No problem on that side. And this one, obviously completely stuck because the disc is now smaller than the wheel. So we're definitely not going to get enough leverage on that to really move it successfully. So we're definitely going to have to have that caliper all apart, I think. So now to remove the parking brake module itself. Now note that some models actually had a manual release cable in the centre console. So the first job here is to unclip the brake cables that are going to the calipers. So we just need to pull that back over there like that, pull it through. And then what we do need to do is unclip that from like a sort of metal bracket there that keeps the cable in position. I don't know why I still keep trying to turn that. 
we know it's seized. So like I say, you've just got to feed that cable through now. It's quite stiff. So just get the cable out of the guides like that. So that's quite easy on that side. On the other side, we've got a um, slightly more complicated because there's an ABS cable in the way. And obviously we don't want to damage that cable. But as you notice, it's probably safer to pull that cable out of the holder so that while you're pulling the cable around, you don't accidentally damage it. Okay, so that's the cables now completely free. So it might be worth just adding some photos at this point so we can actually see this module and all the associated parts. So there is the module. I've added some labels there. Now my module is only held on by two bolts, but I'm unsure about that, whether two bolts have been snapped by somebody else previously. And there's our electrical connection. Okay then. So in my case, to remove the module, I needed a 15 millimeter spanner and also a 14 millimeter and 17 millimeter socket. So I'm unsure whether that's actually correct. Because I'm, I'm suspecting somebody may have actually been here before, possibly broken two bolts and possibly snapped up more than two bolts and they've just replaced it with what they had around in the workshop. But anyway, like I say, in my case it's two bolts and you just got to try and get that spanner up there underneath the heat shield to try and hold it while I undid it. So if what I'm thinking is correct, you may not actually need a spanner. It may be just four bolts that go straight up. Um, but obviously they're vulnerable to snapping off possibly. So the electrical connection is easy enough. That's just push down on the clip and then turn the grey locking lever over and then off it comes. So that was nice and easy. Sometimes those electrical connections can be an absolute nightmare. So just got to unclip it also from the module. So when we remove it we don't actually strain the cable. But we'll have a close up there. Again I'm not sure whether those wires should actually be bare like that. Um, or whether they would normally have been covered. Like I say, say I do suspect somebody's been here before. So I'll just get this last bolt out. So as you heard just earlier on there, I've got some dust in my eye. It always seems to be sensible when working under a car. So perhaps put some eye protection on because it always falls in your eye. And then you're rolling around trying to get it out of your eye again. Okay, so that's now re released. There we go. So we can just carefully lower that down now and pull the two sides brake cables through. So it's easier than I actually thought. I was always quite worried about these handbrake modules, thinking, you know, if they actually fail, could it almost write the car off? Well, I suppose if you bought it new at £700, then it would write the car off, but thankfully there are repairs available. So that's what it looks like. So what we're doing now is just take that over to the bench and see if we can replace those cables. So that's the emergency release cable there. So I don't think you're actually supposed to change these cables. I think they like you just to sell you a completely new unit at 700 pounds. Okay then, so with it on the bench, we can start to have a look at this in a little bit more detail now. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of plus gas on there just to hopefully help those two bolts come undone. And I'll have a quick look at the cables. So these are the new cables that you can get for around £70 online. So note that one's got like a heat shield on, which is on the left, 
and the other one actually has like a long screw thread on which is on the right you obviously can't get these back to front anyway because they're completely different cables but anyway what I'm going to do now is just mark it so I know that the orientation of this actual housing so what you need now is a four millimeter hex key and a 10 millimeter socket now the hex key needs to be quite a low profile one because it's not got much space in there to fit so I'll just lock that in there with the hex key and we'll get these two bolts off there's only two of them I'll leave a link to that set in the video description like I normally do because I always put all the tools that I use in there so people can easily find them okay so just get this other one off now and find the nut so this basically slides backwards and lifts out so there we go just pull it back and then just lift it out like so so we're getting closer to opening this module up now always seems quite scary right what I'll do now is actually just blow some compressed air over those fixings just to make sure when I put the torques in there's no debris that's going to actually possibly cause the head to burr over so for this it's a Torx 20 and there's eight self-tapping screws there that need to come out so we'll get those out and then we'll actually see inside one of these electronic parking brake modules Again, that didn't seem to be stuck down as much as I would have thought it had been. I thought it would have been harder to remove that. But anyway, we should, we'll have some photos now to show the different parts. So there's the motor and the gearbox. And then we've got the emergency release cable there. And that's the screw thread that presumably it pulls on. And there's our emergency release mechanism. A very delicate ribbon cable, which we must avoid the wiring connector and the blue relay and these can sometimes fail and cause the module to stop working so I was trying to see how this parking brake release works but I couldn't get it to activate so I think this was because the cables had gone fully over to the left hand side so it wasn't able to release so by removing the two end caps which we've got to do anyway that then allows the um, cable to actually slide inside the module. So we'll just pop these off. And then the whole thing can sort of move over. Like so. So presumably that would normally be in the middle. So I'm just going to measure the actual thread length. I'm not sure if it's got any relevance because presumably it pulls on that thread. And since mine snapped, it's probably going to be all over the place. But just for the record. 89.35. It's 89.35. So basically 90 millimetres. But that was just sort of hanging in there. That literally was on the end. So anyway, so let's try this emergency release. There we go. Because obviously I thought, well, if you pull that, can you actually ever reconnect it again without opening the box? And thankfully, you can. So it just seems like all you've got to do is be able to push those cables together. It's quite a good little mechanism, that. Quite impressed with that. So yeah, so that's how you, what the emergency release does and how you can reconnect it. Obviously you'd have to take it off the brake caliper to give you the space to pull the cables. 
But anyway, I'll check it again just to show you. So it's looking like about 91 millimetres there. So just in case you ever need to know that information. There it is. OK, so the first job I'll do here is to remove the left cable. So we've just got to pull this little plastic. It's like a locking cover off. So that's off there. There's only one way that can fit. It's got like an indentation, so it does have to line up. So then we just got to pull this one off. I was hoping I could just pull the clip up. Absolutely terrified of that ribbon cable, because obviously if you damage that, I think that's probably the unit finished. And I presume inside that little white unit might be a strain gauge. Because obviously the module needs to know when to actually stop pulling, doesn't it? So if they use the strain gauge and at a certain force it stops. That's just what I'm assuming anyway. So I'm just going to put a little bit of silicon grease on here. Um, I always think a bit of grease helps everything. And then we'll put this in. So it's like a little cup there. So you've just got to get that into like the cup of the cable. It is quite fiddly. So once it's in there, you've then just got to pull that locking cover over. And like I say, that has to line up. I was having problems with that because I didn't realise that actually has to line up. So I was sort of pre-lining it up this time. We'll get there in a minute. There we go. Right, so that's now lined up. So I thought that should make it a little bit easier now because we're sort of pre-ready just to push it over. And then again, I thought, well, the rubber seal there probably would be good to put a little bit of silicon grease on that as well. So we'll have another go now. So it's in the cup. So just push the plastic cover over carefully, like so, and that should hold it in place. So just making sure it's fully on there, because obviously if that was to come off then you, you'd risk the cable popping off, which would be a bit of a pain. So then have to remove it again. Okay, so that's one side on. So we just screw the thing back on there. Again, just put a bit of grease on that. Might act as a little bit of a sealant as well. Stop any water getting in there. Okay, so on to the other side now. I did try and mark this with some yellow paint, as you can see. But that didn't work. It came straight off. So I'll just unwind that out now. So there wasn't much thread actually inserted in that. So the new cable's got a little plastic protective sleeve on, just pull that off. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit of silicon grease there on the O-ring before I pop that in. I'll also put some grease on the thread. Um, I'll put some ceramic bearing grease on from my cycling days. Might just help help the mechanism rotate on that while it pulls. So I think mine was slightly shorter than the original. And like I said, I'm not sure that there's any relevance to how far that needs to be screwed in. Because obviously it's going to be pulling on that by turning it. So I put mine in and I only had about 80 millimetres of thread showing. We just lock those together now. 
hopefully that's the job done basically they don't give you any instructions with these when you buy the cables so you sort of guessing it a little bit and hoping that yeah you've put it in there right and so I'm still paranoid so I'm trying to check this so according to that, only eight nothing millimeters was inserted into the gearbox nothing was in it. which is I can't see that being right so like I said I've threaded it in a little bit further but anyway we'll find out when we put it on the car so I'm just going to give this a quick wipe over with some brake cleaner Again, I wonder if somebody's been in here before. Because I would have thought this would have been harder to have opened up. But anyway, so we've put a little bit of sealant on there. That's some Furnox LSX silicon sealant I've used. And we'll get it all back together now. So let's just put it back in the housing. So I'm obviously quite nervous at this point that this is actually going to be okay and it works. But anyway, so I won't video putting it back on the car because I think that's pretty self-explanatory. There's no torque settings to be concerned about. So what I'll do is I'll jump straight to seeing if it works. So now the moment of truth. So here we go, the very nervous moment. Is it going to work? And it does. So we can take it out of gear now. Hopefully that's that job done. Right then, so it's just to replace the road wheels and torque them up. Okay then, so we'll pop these wheels back on. We'll speed most of this up because what I will need to do is remove the error codes from the the computer. So these are all tied to up to 105 newton meters. So we just get those done. And then like I say, what I'll do is bring out the diagnostic tool and just see what error codes we've got and clear them. Okay, so let's get on to that part now then. So now to clear the error codes. Okay, so the OBD connector is in the center console. So it's just lifted it up and you've got to pull the plastic tray out. Now I found it easier to use like a pair of pliers to pull on that. Like so, and there it is. So we just get this, get this connected and see what my Autel says about the car. So I'm expecting to see quite a few error codes on the parking brake, I should imagine. So we'll switch this on. I must say, I find this Autel pretty impressive. It's one of the better tools I've ever bought. So Renault. All right then, so automatic selection. See what we've got. Seven, five, three, nine, twelve, five, five. Crikey, there's almost too many error codes there to count. So we've got a lot of error codes. We've got quite a few. Okay then, so let's have a look, see what these error codes are, just out of interest. Yes, there's a few there, aren't there? So it's worth just noting these for the record. I presume a lot of these codes could be caused perhaps by a faulty battery or something. So what have we got on the ABS? Read codes. Computer power supply voltage too low. So that could cause a lot of errors if we've actually had a low battery at some point. So I'm not sure whether we need to really worry about these too much. 
What have we got on this one? No parking brake, injection, emission missing, brake fluid level circuit short to earth. So again, you don't actually know how old these codes actually are. I mean, these could be pretty old codes. Left indicator circuit, relay, steering lock, childproof lock. I don't know if these are actually that serious. End of clutch switch travel, short circuit to earth. I mean, it's worth noting them just for the, like I say, for the record. Right, parking brake. Well, we, we expect to see some errors here. So what does it say on that? Vehicle moves with max. Yeah, definitely did. Apply the parking brake cannot be correctly applied or released. Battery under voltage again there. Under voltage. So I think she's had a problem with the battery at some point, which could possibly cause a lot of these error codes. So UPC. I'm not actually sure what UPC stands for. Permanent supply, left hand dips, neutral air conditioning. It's almost like the cabin on that. That's the only thing with these diagnostic computers. It's all well and good having them. But unless you've actually been sort of taught and trained to use them correctly, you can sometimes get overwhelmed with a lot of information that you're not actually too sure about. So sometimes too much knowledge or too much information isn't a good thing unless you know what you're doing. And sadly, I'm only a DIYer. Driver's seat, what was wrong with that? Computer power supply. I wonder if that's voltage again. And the final one is air conditioning. Temperature sensor circuit, internal temperature sensor, humidity sensor circuit. It's got a lot of things on this car. It's quite a, it's the top of the range Renault Laguna, I believe. So it does have a lot. Right, so we're clear all those codes now. Um, and then what I'll do is monitor this. So once she's driven the car for a while, I'll recheck the codes and see what pops back up. Hopefully nothing will pop back up. Okay, so that's all cleared now. Yeah, so we just clear the whole lot. So the other thing the Altel would do is it would do service items. So I'm wondering whether you need to reset the handbrake. Because it's like when you change a battery, in some cars you have to reset the battery. So I'm just seeing if there's anything about resetting the handbrake module. Now I can't see anything. So perhaps you don't need to, and perhaps it's just automatic. But anyway, right then, so we'll go on to some torque settings now. So here's all the torque settings relating to the brakes. So hopefully that's of use to you. And what I'll do now is just include some reference photographs that were taken during the video. So here we can see the module itself before I've opened it up. And there's the inside. So these were actually taken on my phone because I didn't actually take as many photos as I normally would because I was quite rushed to do the job. Um, yeah, so thankfully I did take some for Instagram. Because I only took, I think, one main photo with the GH5s. So there we've got the motor, the gearbox, the emergency release cable, the screw thread on the cable, the emergency release mechanism, that very delicate ribbon cable, the wiring connector block, and the blue relay. And then there's the label diagrams of the items under the car. Like so. So hopefully this gives you a good insight into this parking brake module 
if ever you need to mend it. So you've been watching how to replace the handbrake cables on a Renault Laguna Mark III with the electronic parking module. And thank you for watching and supporting my channel and please like and subscribe. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in January 2023 and I can also be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coats and Gators.